one way to set off any tech group, any smartphone tech group, if you want to get engagement, you want to start a war, you want people communicating, you feel like, oh my God, this group is too quiet, and you want to start off a war, is to simply put the very simple question down. Snapdragon versus MediaTek, which one's better? And I tell you, everybody will come out of their foxholes and go to war. <laughs> Once upon a time, it was um, it was Qualcomm Snapdragon versus Samsung Exynos, and at some point too, I think this one is still raging on, but it's no longer as as virulent or as you know emotional as combative as it used to be. Apple's Bionic versus Qualcomm Snapdragon. That you know that war has simmered down a bit. The one that is heating up right now is Snapdragon versus MediaTek. Qualcomm Snapdragon versus MediaTek Dimensity. That's the one that's really heating up right now. So people have come and have asked me, Jeff, between Qualcomm and that's Qualcomm Snapdragon and MediaTek Dimensity or just MediaTek generally, MediaTek Helio and Dimensity, which one is better? And usually they expect me to say Snapdragon is better. That's not how it works, people. That is not how it works. And that's why I'm here to talk about Snapdragon versus MediaTek SOCs, right? So when most people come and they ask this question, they expect a very simple, straightforward answer because most people believe that tech should be simple and straightforward. It can be, but it is not always so. I think a lot of us, those of us who are inside this space, we spend a lot of time trying to understand this stuff. And trying to understand it and put it in a way that regular people will understand because obviously when we understand this stuff we have to communicate it to other people so we have to use people's speech we're not chat gpt that's why we hear people say oh chat gpt is going to replace people Faff, it is not at least not yet have you read anything chat gpt put out it's trash but leave that aside let's talk about like when people come and say yo jeff snapdragon versus mediatek which one is better and like you know they expect me to say mediatek or Snapdragon, and then when you don't come up with answers like that, people will be like, oh, you're biased, you're a stan. You know, somebody came to my group and then was saying, oh, consistently over time, oh, Jeff, this so, so, so ambassador, Jeff, this brand ambassador, Jeff, that brand ambassador. Like, he just kept saying it over and over and over and over again. And one day I told him, bro, I will not condone that. He got mad and he left. And personally, I don't really care. Let us proceed. So when it comes to Snapdragon versus MediaTek, there are a lot of things to consider, many things to consider. And having just having somebody just told you yes or no, Snapdragon or MediaTek, is not doing them any favors and it's not doing you any favors. And if anybody, if you ask that question, anybody tells you straightforward, I say, this one is the answer. That is a very, very wrong answer. Now, the very first thing when people ask me that question, the very first thing I ask them is, which particular SOC are you asking for? Which one are you talking about? Because if you come out and you're asking, say, Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 versus MediaTek Helio G99, for example, which one is better? Then it makes sense to say the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 is better. But if you're asking Dimensity 8200 versus Snapdragon 685, for example, Dimensity 8200 versus Snapdragon 685, which one is better? Of course, the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 is better than the Snapdragon 685. It's common sense at this point. But when somebody comes and then puts that question in front of you and says, hey, answer without specifying which SOC they're talking about, it's actually a loaded question. And it would be silly for any tech person to just jump out and answer MediaTek or Snapdragon because, you know, they just want to answer questions. So when it comes to Snapdragon versus MediaTek, the first thing you want to ask them is, which particular SOCs are you talking about? Not the, because when you go, when you go to the brand, the two brands in general, which I've seen some people ask, then if not that, there will be also other questions to ask them. First of all, let's talk about pure raw performance. Now, SOC to SOC, MediaTek usually has the best raw performance and on benchmarks, they would perform better. That's the truth. When it comes to just raw performance but unfortunately raw performance is one thing the ability to use that raw performance is another thing let's talk about like how do i explain this now let's say the average footballer and using boat for example 
right? Let's 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 pick a fast winger, somebody like say Gareth Bale, for example, right? Gareth Bale is fast, but I don't think he will beat Usain Bolt in a prime Usain Bolt in a hundred meter race. But bro is fast, right? Now Bill has optimized his speed, or rather he had when he was playing, optimized his speed to be able to run with the ball. Usain Bolt has pure speed, but he hasn't optimized that speed to run with a ball. So even if Usain Bolt is going to beat Garrett Bill on the track, Garrett Bill is probably going to beat him with the ball. You understand that? That's optimization. I don't know if you got the explanation, but that's basically what optimization is. So when it comes to optimization, Snapdragon SOCs are always optimized. In fact, they are the best optimized SOCs in the Android space. Even way more optimized than Exynos. The only SOCs that I know, family of SOCs that are optimized as Qualcomm's SOCs are probably, if not probably, it's the Apple Bionic because Apple keeps a tight leash on their products. But other than that, Qualcomm's SOCs are very optimized. So with that optimization, right, if, if MediaTek has got raw performance at this level and Qualcomm has got raw performance on this level, optimization bridges the gap. Because you'd see that despite having this level of raw performance, but the apps and the tasks and the games are optimized for it, it's going to outperform MediaTek SOCs that have less optimization. So those are key things that you need to look out for. The only way that MediaTek SOCs now with their raw power can actually outperform Qualcomm Snapdragon SOCs with that optimization is when those MediaTek SOCs are like just too far ahead that even with, an up, with all the optimization, that let's take for example now the aforementioned Dimensity 8200 and the 685, like no matter the optimization, it's never really going to catch up because the performance gap is just is so wide it's the pacific really that's the only time but other than that if you're going to be putting two qualcomm s uh, a qualcomm soc and a mediatek soc in the same performance range right not far from each other the optimization the snapdragon SOC are going to get is going to give it an edge over that from uh over, over that from uh the ones from from mediatek and a very good example is so especially when it comes to gaming is the adreno gpus on board because it is a known fact these days now that 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 game developers emulators uh, emulator developers actually optimize emulators and games to run better and play better they make device drivers that would help games run smoother and work better on qualcomm's adreno gpus which are found on snapdragon socs so there on that, that that's for that one so let's move on let's talk about pricing for example yes pricing mediatek socs are cheaper despite having the better the, the higher raw performance but because of all those uh, you know um optimizations and stuff that go into qualcomm socs qualcomm socs are a lot more expensive right so that's why you see that qualcomm socs are very very expensive the phones you find qualcomm socs are very pricey so you see most people would prefer to just use mediatek and then just you know close one eye and then back on the raw performance and then sell that to you and see you know if that would fly Right, but the more premium phones will go with Qualcomm Snapdragon SOCs. It is what it is, right? So, I think that's like basically the major ones. I think another one I want to look at is like you know, innovations, right? MediaTek has done a lot of innovations, right? They've done a lot of innovations. They have a lot of firsts, but they don't do it as well as Qualcomm does, and that's the most important thing. Qualcomm have their own GPUs, which is, you know, on the same die, on the same surface with the CPU core. So it, the, the, interchange, the interconnectivity between CPUs, cores, and GPU is actually excellent. MediaTek do not make their own GPUs. They have to rely on Mali GPUs or from uh, Imagination Tech Power VR GPUs like that. And so since it's from a different manufacturer, there's going to be you know some hiccups here and there between you know the connectivity between the cpu cores and the gpus on mediatek socs so that one's for that one mediatek have their own modems they've got their own isp they've got their own stuff i mean all the other companies are trying to catch up now and they're now making their own stuff but since mediatek started uh, since qualcomm started doing it a long time ago they're actually well ahead of all the other people 
especially for for optimization of isps you know their ai stuff that like they're so far ahead but even though the other companies are starting to catch up they still hold that slight advantage and that is something that you should be looking at right so when it comes when it comes to like you know generally company-wise company-wide stuff they really you, you could say that qualcomm has like better optimization for the socs better camera performance better this better this better that but they are very very pricey and if you if we, if it was just them a lot of us wouldn't use high-end phones that we use today and that's why mediatek exists right to blow smoke up their asses so that's why they're able to like you know keep their stuff a bit more affordable because we know that mediatek's stuff they give you raw performance like very good high raw performance and it's affordable and they are starting to catch up and they are bringing up you know functions and stuff these days right but on the soc to soc level you cannot really say which one is better it depends on which socs you're talking about in particular and how they function or how they how they stack up against each other that is the question you should be asking and answering right so with that we've come to the end of this video please make sure uh, to tell me below if you got anything if you've got any questions what you understand what you know what's here and there etc etc and all that and i will be sure to i'm always in my comments i always reply at least i check my smartphone i, I check my uh <laughs> my youtube uh every three hours to make sure that i don't miss comments unless i'm very busy but i always reply comments i always do so so please make sure to like comment uh subscribe and share it's stuff like this that helps more channels like mine grow and i will see you in the next one